Thank you, Abhijit, for the opportunity. Actually, from uh, so far, we have been talking over the macula. Just for a change, I think we'll go under the macula. So what happens in this? And uh, these are my financial disclosure. OK, so submacular hemorrhage, just for uh, me to remember what it is, submacular hemorrhage. It's basically the presence of uh, blood in the potential space that is between the retinal pigment epithelium and uh, uh <coughs> RPE, actually. So we come across this quite often nowadays, especially in case of PCV. In fact, in PCV, we have got a lot of cases with the breakthrough, which is hemorrhage and uh, the subretinal hemorrhage. So in such cases, when we go for vitrectomy, we can uh, have surprises with a lot of uh, subretinal bleed in this. The other cases includes uh, AMD. And uh, when we do the surgery, we ourselves cause a lot of subretinal bleed, especially when you're draining in case of a uh, scleral buckling. Usually now we go for the blind uh, needle uh, drainage procedure. There is always a chance when you drain somewhere at uh, 14711, 15711, where the vortex is there, there is always a possibility of uh, subretinal bleed. If it is very minimal and if the break is superior, inject the gas, it's fine. Otherwise, if it's massive, then we'll have to convert that into vitrectomy or later on also we'll have to go for vitrectomy to evacuate the blood. And uh, especially now we are doing a lot of uh, valve uh, for glaucoma. And uh, the, there is always a chance of perforation during that. And of course, the other indications uh, where we, other causes and indications where we have subtle bleed is uh, trauma and uh, RAM. In fact, RAM will have ble uh, blood in all the three layers. And these are the main reasons why we have to remove the blood, because the presence of iron and hemosiderin and the fibrin in the blood can be toxic. It says that it is. Uh, as early as 24 hours, you can have the problem with this. And the clot retraction can shear and damage the photoreceptors. And the presence of blood basically uh, mechanically separates and it acts like a, a, as a barrier actually for the nutrients to go either way and uh, finally leads to fusciform scar. And we have got uh, different grades, the mild with half DD and moderate is up to 2 DD and more than 2 DD is severe. Especially if it's more than 2 DD or if it is 2 DD and uh, anterior to equator, we go for surgery. The good visual prognostic uh, indicators include uh, a shorter duration, which is, I mean, uh, subretinal hemorrhage and uh, eyes with good uh, vision. But if it's a relatively larger, uh, I mean, more number of days it's staying under the retina and the eyes with the AMD, then the chance of visual recovery is e easily bad, actually. So we have got a lot of uh, options, right, from observation to vitrectomy to the injection of uh, PPA and pneumatic displacement. But we'll be confining ourselves to the submacular surgery. So first uh, option will be we'll, uh, just intravitreal gas alone. If it's a mild or moderate, especially in case of trauma where there is a choroidal uh, rupture, we usually go for SF6 because 14 days is more than sufficient for displacing the blood. But the only thing is the patient will have to maintain the phase down position. Maybe 0.3 to 0.5 will be sufficient. And before injecting, just look for any breaks inferiorly. Any breaks inferiorly, and if you inject gas, there is always a traction on the retina. The chance of detachment is very high, and you can have vitreous hemorrhage also. And sometimes you can combine that with uh, anti vgf agents. This is a case of a choroidal tear. And this patient is quite fortunate, actually, because the choroidal tear is not passing through the fovea. It's central to the fovea injected with the gas and this is a, a final result. The blood is absorbed or displaced laterally and got, got absorbed. Patient is having good vision, but of course there'll be a scotoma and we have to keep on watching this patient because maybe after the eight months or maybe later on, there is every possibility that this patient can develop a CMBM. And uh, the most interesting part is the surgery for the subretinal uh, heme in this case. This is a case with vitreous hemorrhage with uh, subretinal blood. So, what we basically do is you do a nice vitrectomy after clearing the vitreous hemorrhage. It's like uh, artificially creating a giant retinal tear. Caught rise, I usually go for 180 degrees because when you are removing the blood and the membrane, it's quite peaceful. So caught rise 180 degrees in the periphery. And now we have to induce the retinal detachment. It is very easy, like in a silicon oil injector, take the balance all solution, mount it on a 44 gauge needle. Uh, don't uh, inject uh, manually, mechanically injecting is fine. So it is like uh, connected to the silicon oil injector. Just keep pressing how you inject the silicon oil and keep the 44 gauge under the retina. Make four uh, blebs at least in all four quadrants. So you can inject 
Only thing is cash should be taken not to inject under the RP, but you can realize when it's going under the RP, but it should be under the retina. Neurosensitive retina, don't go under the RP. Once uh, the bleb is formed, do a fluid air exchange, and all these blebs will coalesce to form a nice uh, detachment. Okay. <coughs> so once the detachment is uh, formed, wherever you have done the cautery in the periphery, see to that there is no vitreous posterior to the cauterized area. Any vitreous, if at all present, it should be anterior to the cauter, I mean uh, cauterized area. Any vitreous posterior to the cauterized area on the retina will definitely lead to redetachment later on when we do. This surgery can be done bimanually or unimanually. So in this case, you just uh, rotate the flap nasally and you can see the uh, clotted blood. Because in a clotted blood, CPA will never work actually. Even in a chronic uh, clots or chronic blood, CPA never works. So once the clot is removed and the membrane is peeled, then the retina is uh, repositioned with uh, PFCL. So you can find a lot of small, small clots. Everything is removed. And once it is done, you replace the retina with PFCL and uh, use uh, maybe a tannoid, uh, I mean tannoid diamond acid scraper to replace the retina into its position. In case if there is uh, severe damage to the RP, there is always a chance for you to go in for a RP transplant, which can be taken from the I mean temporal retina. Once it is done, replace the retina under the PFCL and treat it like a giant retinal tear. So at least a 10 to 12 rows of uh, laser will be required. And uh, 1000 centisoke oil is more than sufficient. So this is the immediate post of the same case. Improved to some, I think, 636, not beyond that. And the same stable after and all these cases where we are operated, I want to mention that they are all single-eyed patients. We don't do this in the, this is another case with the, it's not exactly subretal heme, but there was an organized membrane under the macula with vitreous hemorrhage. So after the vitrectomy is done, you can see there was a membrane. In fact, we have done already the laser also in this case. So now you induce the detachment basically by injecting the balanced salt solution with the silicon oil injector in all four quadrants and once if you do a fluid air exchange again a nice detachment happens all the blebs unite to form a nice bleb and it is comfortable for us to trim the peripheral retina with a cutter so now the peripheral retina is trimmed once it is done you just uh, fold it and you can find a nice membrane under the retina fortunately in this the rp was not ripped when we removed it so the membrane is quite dense Sometimes it is difficult to remove these membranes with the cutter, so trim it and we'll have to remove it. Same thing, we have uh, trimmed the membrane. You can see that membrane and uh, this is the post-op OCP and the fundus picture of the patient. And this is uh, the last case. This is again a case of CCV with a large subretal bleed with uh, which is hemorrhage. And this surgery was done with Engine So once the vitrectomy is done, same thing. Everything is the same. So sometimes you need to do bimanually also. Here the large clots and the clotted bloods are there, along with uh, some membrane also. So once it is removed, you just keep it over the retina. What happened in this case is the membrane was so dense, we tried trimming it with 20 gauge also. It was not possible. Finally, we extended and uh, removed the rest of the membrane through the sclerotomy wound and the retina was lasered and this is the post-op picture of this patient and fortunately this patient uh, surprisingly I think this is the best case I can say as far as the vision is concerned improving to 618 and these are some other cases where we have done. So in case of uh, in conclusion in uh, subretal bleed or uh, submacular bleed the natural history is uh, very variable as far as the visual outcome and it depends on uh, what is the etiology and what is the duration also. So in case if it is related to CNV, as in case of a neurovascular uh, AMD, usually it carries a very poor prognosis, and especially if uh, it is untreated, usually the patient has got no practically useful vision at all. But very frankly speaking, there is very minimal benefit of submacular surgery. 
as of now, because uh, in most of the trials, when they do the submacular surgery, especially for CNVM, the initial vision itself is uh, very poor, so we cannot expect them to go give a good vision. But with more and more submacular uh, bleed, I think if you intervene early, I think we can uh, give a better result. And submacular bleed is one, such, especially in case of C CCV, is one such indication where we'll be reviving this uh, technique of uh, going in for submacular surgery. Thank you.